Hi, I want to thank you for taking time to watch my video on making a kitless pan. In my previous video, I used both my metal lathe and my wood lathe to make the pan, mainly because on the metal lathe I can cut an exact, di an exact diameter a lot easier than I can on a wood lathe, such as for a tenon. After the video uh, came out, somebody asked me if I could make a video showing how to do the whole pen on a wood lathe. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to start with making the mandrel. Most of the kitless pens are going to require a mandrel of some sort in order for you to hold the piece while you turn it. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we need to do to make that mandrel. Let's start out by taking a look at some of the different mandrels that I have. These first two were mandrels that I purchased from Arizona Silhouette, I believe it was. They work by simply placing your barrel of your pen over the end of the mandrel, tightening the nut, which expands the uh, mandrel, locking the barrel into place. The next two are mandrels that I made out of steel on my metal lathe for my kitless pens. The way they're made is you turn the the mandrel down to the diameter that you have drilled the, the uh, cap, or in this place the cap, or the, the body of the pen. And I have three actually different diameters on the cap. And when we put our piece on, it just simply threads right on and locks into place so that you can turn the pen. This next one is... Uh, a, I think they call this a pin chuck because you lay a pin on here before you put your uh, uh, barrel on and it locks it into place. This one is made out of aluminum and the next two here are mandrels that I made for the uh, Junior Jan, Junior Statesman size pins and they work simply by putting that pin in there and then when you turn it that pin rolls over to the side of the uh, little slot that you uh, filed in there and locks the, the piece into place. So what we're going to look at today since we're going to be making this mandrel on a wood lathe is we're going to take one making it similar to these mandrels that have the threads on it but we're going to make it out of aluminum. Now we need to determine which drill bits we're going to use to drill our body of uh, our pen and that's going to give us the diameters that we need to make the mandrel. So my last pen, I, well I should start out with, I use a 9 millimeter by 0.75 tap. In order to determine the drill bit we take the 9 and subtract the 0.75 from it and we need a drill bit that is 8.25 millimeters. I've got a P bit which is right around 320 thousandths. So we're going to go ahead and use that. And my last pen, I drilled the whole length of the body with the P-bit. My next pen, I'm actually going to step down the end of it a little bit because that gives us a little bit more control if we want to shape the end of the pen a little bit more narrow. More narrow we've got more material to work with. So if we measure the end of this converter, at 300 or 225 thousandths or thereabouts. So that is going to be about a D bit. So what I'm going to do is drill this much with the P and then the rest of the bit or the rest of the barrel with the, uh, the D bit. So in order to make the mandrel, we're going to make the end of the mandrel about 244 thousandths. The next part of it is going to be around 320 thousandths. And then the part that is threaded, where we'll thread our uh, part on, uh, body part on to the mandrel, is going to be the full nine millimeters or ten millimeters, depending on the the size of the um, dies, tap and die that you have. So these uh, measurements are pretty close. We'll kind of fine tune them as we go, and. Uh, get what we need but if you're going to use a different size tap and die remember to take that into consideration
I've got our material in the lathe now in our Beal college chuck here. I've got five inches of half inch aluminum rod. I believe I bought it at Lowe's and we're going to face the end of it squaring it up a little bit and uh, the next step is to take our center drill here and just drill a little bit of a, a hole in the end of the piece and this has a, I believe there's a 60 degree angle on it so that it will fit with the live center. And you notice my lathe here has quite a bit of play. And so that's one of the reasons I don't use it a lot for uh, some of this more detailed work because you got to get it lined up just right. So anyway, okay, so let's go ahead and drill this hole. If you don't have one of these center bits, it's probably a good idea to pick one up. I think uh, you're being able to uh, put your live center in there, holding the, the end, uh, might help while turning it, although you could probably drill a hole and uh, with a small hole with a, uh, well, I don't know, you know, quarter inch bit or whatever, and not very deep. And that may work just as well. I've got the material chucked up here now and starting to turn it down. It's going to take nice thin cuts. I left a lot of it in the chuck. I'm going to kind of do half at a time so that I don't have to have so much sticking out. I think it gives me a little bit more support. Not sure if this is necessary but I'm still working on this process, so do whatever feels comfortable to you. Uh, not exactly sure what tools to use, but this seems to uh, so far be working pretty good. So we're gonna take this end down to about 244 thousandths, I believe, what was that uh, diameter, and then we'll move on and do the rest of it. I think when we're working with aluminum, you might want to wear some leather gloves might be a good idea, although I'm not sure wearing gloves and working on a lathe is a good idea there. So strike that, keep lathe safety in mind, uh, make sure you wear goggles, uh, and uh, face mask, face shield, something like that to protect your eyes. And don't try to clear the, the uh, aluminum, aluminum out aluminum I can say it out with uh, with the lathe running because it uh, certainly can cut us pretty easily I went over to Harbor Freight and picked up a couple cheap files first of all I got this 12 inch flat hand file uh, for rapid removal of metal and then I got a 8 inch flat file a little bit finer uh, on that and I've got some chalk. Supposedly, if you put chalk on the file, it's supposed to keep the aluminum from clogging it. And then I've got a piece of copper tubing that I flattened out that is supposed to help to get the uh, clogged aluminum out of the file.
around 340 right now. I want to get down around 320. I should have probably gone a little bit longer with the uh, gouge. down to nine millimeters and it's at ten right now. Okay, I've got my M9.75. Unfortunately, with the uh, unfortunately, since this is, uh, I, I can't use my um, die holder to get this started straight. So I'm going to have to do it by hand. And uh, I think by the time we get up where we put thread, it'll be okay. Threads are pretty fine up to this point. Um, here's where we hit the area where the Threads are going to hold the body onto the mandrel. Another thing about the metal lathe is it will run backwards, so it takes this off much easier. Mandrel. 